Yesterday we talked about a couple of weapons that I think that you can do absolutely fantastic with within World War II if you end up having a solid class setup around it. While they might not be at the core of the most overpowered or meta weapons, yesterday we talked about the STG-44, the Type 100, and the Car 98K Sniper Rifle. Three classes that we gave you guys that I thought can really help out and everything like that if you want to jump in and try them out for yourselves. But while many new players may be jumping into the game and now because of getting the game for Christmas or while some people may just still be grinding it out and playing the game itself since launch, some people really stick to weapons that they feel comfortable with and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But that said, I've been one of those people that have been going for camo challenges as of recently and I've been trying out a ton of different weapons and so I wanted to compile a list of the weapons that I think you should absolutely not use at the very moment within World War II. So once again, if you guys are brand new to the game, if you guys are looking for tips and tricks, this helps you out in the sense that maybe stay away from these weapons, don't necessarily try them out to the fullest if you don't have to, if you just want to try and get better at the game, if you want to be at its base at a better advantage compared to maybe some other weapons, or if you guys were looking to dabble into some other weaponry, you can think about what weapons to maybe try and avoid. But that said, if you are going for camo challenges like myself, it's inevitable that you're going to eventually end up coming across these weapons and having to use them at some point, but the fact still remains. Today I want to give you guys my list of the six worst weapons in Call of Duty World War II. So that said, let's jump in at number one with a weapon classification that many of you guys will gravitate around, but there's enough of these weapons that I think that in the rifle classification, you might not have to come to using this one because there are other alternatives out there, but that is the SVT-40. Now, this one is one that I think I'm kind of on the fence with and probably one that I can stand a little bit more than the other weapons we'll be talking about within this list, but still is rather underpowered and I think definitely could have some additional buffs made to it if it were to ever come to that. Whether or not we end up getting those buffs, I guess that's something for time to tell, but this thing is a semi-automatic rifle and one that can kill in two shots, but that is very generous. A lot of the times it won't necessarily do that, but if you end up having your shots on target chest and higher, it will be something that is two shot. But the one thing that really lacks in my mind is the fire rate because there is a decent little interval in between shots that you can't actually rapid fire unless you have the rapid fire attachment on so it very much so makes it like a base M1A1 or a base M1 and we know that at its core whenever it comes down to those weapons they're not the greatest and most adequate for a lot of gunfights and with the flinch values within World War II this is something that unless you get that first shot off and your enemy misses their first and you hit their second shot a lot of the times the gunfight comes down to who can control recoil what that pattern of flinch is and a lot of different variables like that so it's not one that I would necessarily recommend going into every gunfight with, but again, at the core, I think this might be the best of the weapons in this list, though still, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Now, the next thing that I want to move over into is two shotguns, and I am not the biggest fan of shotguns in this game. I think I can stand the combat shotgun, and that's about it within World War II. So that said, we have two shotguns leading up in the number two and number three spot, but the first one is one that I think is definitely by far the worst of these two, that being the Luftwaffe drilling. Now, for those of you guys that know what this is, it's the double barreled that is not the sawed off that is the expeditionary prestige reward. Instead, you have two shots in the chamber and both are very weak with a very small damage range. And that's something that when you put those two factors together, it almost becomes laughable at how weak it can be at times. Unless you're right up on top of somebody or probably within in game about five meters from them, you're not going to get a one shot kill off of this. And a lot of the times, if you've played World War II at all, you know that a lot of situations lead to double team triple teams and maybe even sometimes four players coming at you at once and so two shots with very relatively weak damage on each well that's not gonna do you much good I think in some of the gameplay you'll see in the background there were a lot of those situations where unless I played it super slow and super tactical I just got absolutely demolished so that said that is one that I would definitely not recommend unless you are playing hardcore or something like that or you're very meticulous and very patient with your shots to the point where you can wait out somebody and maybe go on a 1v1 every single time and it's something in which you have two shots per player which again you still need to be very close so you need to gauge that how you will. Now we mentioned two shotguns within this list and the second one of that is the toggle action. Now this one is magazine fed and you have six shots per magazine without extended mag so of course it's nice you have a little bit more at your disposal whereas you didn't have it with the Luftwaffe drilling but the thing is this thing is still awful with its damage and its range. At its base and at its core, I guess the fact that it is semi-automatic with six shots in the magazine, that is something that is definitely nice, but when you take into consideration, once again, that damage, that range, and the fire rate itself, 
it becomes something that very much so pushes you away from wanting to use it. When there is that sort of different timed interval in between shots that you have, it's almost like a trigger stop essentially, in which it has probably about a quarter second delay on when you can hit that and fire it off again. That's something that really becomes irritating whenever you're in these close quarter situations with a very low damage weapon. That said, you will see in some situations also, it seems like the hip fire spread was not the greatest in these times. And I think even in one point in time during this, somebody just completely walked through my shots already having taken damage, but it is what it is, but it's one that I definitely would not recommend, and I guess, unless you're going for camos, you won't have to suffer through these, but if you are, I definitely would recommend Hardcore for all these, just so you have that better option of getting the one shots. But that said, that's going to move us over into the fourth weapon, getting over into what is a little classification of DLC weaponry, which, for those of you guys that are new, you can end up getting DLC weapons for free by completing challenges out of the Winter Siege Special Orders with Major Howard, but for those of you guys that have been grinding out, once again, you already know about these, we've already showcased them here up on the channel, but that said, the next one I want to talk about is the Gewehr 43, the semi-automatic that a lot of people thought would have been in the base game, but it was not, and it might have been a good thing that it was not, because a lot of people probably would have been upset with this, or I guess the DLC part kind of evens out because it's not overpowered, it's more so on the weaker end, I think, but this thing is a semi-automatic rifle with decent ammunition, especially if you have extended mags on it, but everything else about the weapon I'm not the biggest fan of. The fire rate is okay, I suppose, but it's one that the damage I feel like I'm shooting marshmallows at people. I can end up shooting four or five shots into them before it ends up killing them, and that's at probably medium range. Some situations you will see in the gameplay where it does work in my favor, I can get these shots off precisely, but a lot of the other times you might see in this gameplay in which I get tons of hit markers, which for a rifle of all things at medium and close range, it's just one of those things you wonder, how does that happen? So the Gewehr 43, the nice part once again is that it's a DLC weapon, it's not anything that is at that base that kind of takes away from the weapon within World War II that we launched with, and with it being a little bit under the radar, I guess, it's something that doesn't help necessarily push that OP or pay to win card that a lot of people will try and push when DLC weapons come out. So I guess that itself works in its favor, but that's probably the only thing that I'd see as a positive out of this. And again, one thing that kind of helps it out in the fact that you might not necessarily come in contact with this too much is there are already enough rifles that are powerful and very viable for a lot of different situations that you might not even come across the opportunity to use it or think about using it. And the next thing that we want to talk about is again another DLC weapon, this one being an LMG, which is nowhere near the monstrosity that say the Lewis is like we talked about a couple of days ago. This is the GPMG, the DLC LMG that we ended up getting for Winter Siege, and again, this one is just not my favorite. Mobility speed is very low, damage seems to be something that is, I guess, middle of the pack in terms of LMG damage, but still nothing that I would recommend out at the forefront leading these LMGs, and definitely one thing that is a huge deterrent is the reload speed. If you don't have Hustle on, in which it gives you faster reloads, it's about six seconds to reload this thing, which is killer, because how many times are you going to be able to be stationary, and especially on a lot of these maps in World War II, in which nobody will push you for six seconds? That becomes a very high risk at that point in time, and of course some of the other attributes don't really play in its favor as well. There seems to be very little aim assist at all. The movement speed in terms of strafing, even with infantry, is very bleak and very minimalistic. And to me, I think the cons just outweigh the pros for this weapon, and so having used it for some of the weapon showcases we did on the channel when it came out, I wouldn't really go back to it if I had the option to. But that said, that's going to move us over into the sixth and final weapon within this, that being a sniper closing out these different sort of classifications that we have for each weapon. The sniper in question here at this one is the Carabin, or the Carabin, I guess it depends on how you want to end up pronouncing it. But the Carabin is a sniper rifle that is the only semi-automatic, and semi-automatics, yes, naturally have much lower damage and some attributes that don't necessarily compete with some of the bolt actions within the game, but the Carbon to me is just one that is very hard and ugly to use because unless you end up getting a direct headshot, you're not going to get a one-shot kill. That is, assuming that your enemy is at 100% health and has not taken any damage from anybody else on the map. But again, there are those situations where you can get one-shots because of that, but anywhere else outside of those scenarios, you need to get a dead headshot to be a one-shot kill. Everything else, even if it's chest and slight neck, 
that's going to be something that is still going to produce a hit marker in which you need to put a second shot in them. I guess one thing that does help out though is the rate of fire in which you can spray it off, but the recoil kicks it up quite a bit so it becomes somewhat of a situation of if you can manage it and if your opponent is not moving at all to the point in which it really just does help at that point controlling your shot. So one thing that I remember having the toughest time with whenever I was going for Sniper's Diamond is the carbon and how long it took to get those one shot kills because that was something that unless once again you play hardcore you're not going to get many one shots unless you end up going for those headshots. But ultimately I'm glad I'm done with this one because I'm probably never going to go back to this. I think this is the first time that I used it since getting my diamond snipers specifically for this b-roll footage in which I only play this match you're seeing with this right now. So one thing that I definitely would not go back to but of course if you have to I definitely feel free and hope you can get that done as soon as possible if you're going for challenges or something like that. But that said, that is going to round out these six weapons here that I think are the absolute worst within World War II. Feel free to let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Do you guys agree, disagree, whatever it may be? If you guys have one you want to throw in on this list, feel free to leave it down there in the comment section down below. Now, truthfully, I'm hoping that some of these end up getting buffs. I'm hoping that these become more viable options at some point in time. But whether or not that actually happens, I guess that's for time to tell. I know shotguns, there was a large discussion on shotgun buffs coming. Coming, and as of recently, the only buff we got was the combat shotgun, arguably the only weapon that did not need a buff out of the shotgun classification within World War II. So interesting that that one was the one that ended up getting buffed and the others got overlooked. So whether or not time gives us some buffs to these shotguns and these other weapons we talked about here in this video, that's something that I couldn't tell you for sure, but I'd love to see. So that said, love to hear your thoughts down there in the comment section down below if you guys have anything you want to add. If you guys want to see any sort of buffs or nerfs coming to any specific weapons, feel free to let let me know. But that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. We are so, so close to 100,000 subscribers, just about 800 subscribers now away at this point. So truly thank you guys for the support. But if you guys are interested in anything regarding best class setups, tips, tricks, news, information, leaks, all that good stuff, we got you covered here up on the channel. So if any of it interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube to practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But I'll say now to the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Nespresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.